welcome to the FMCG Guys, the podcast that dives into the innovation, strategy, and trends shaping consumer goods and retail in Europe and beyond. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the FMCG Guys live edition. I'm Daniel joining you live, of course, from Barcelona in the Mediterranean um, and hope you've been able to connect well. This is and today is a memorable day. It's a day that only happens once every four years. It's uh, February 29th um, and we're here to speak about one of the hot topics shaking the FMCG industry in 2024. It's no other than digital transformation and not digital transformation, the sexy, shiny things that maybe we've talked about a lot in the last four years, but it's the hardcore digital transformation that maybe people avoid sometimes, which is how the company actually functions, how it's ingrained into, ingrained into a culture, our sales processes, our supply chain processes. And today it's not going to be a typical approach. It's, it's going to be very specific and it's um, time to kill once and for all, all the myths and legends that surround uh, digital transformation. So we're going to be myth busting here and I'm well, very well accompanied for the occasion. So first of all, I have a special co-host for the day and it's no other than PVSB Peter Vaughn from the CPG guys, a sister podcast in the US. How are you? Daniel, so excited to be joining you today. And I do so. I am actually out at a conference in Las Vegas, Nevada. So I am further away than I usually am. Not just the the six hour difference, going to add another three. So we've got uh, we've got a nine hour gap between us. But so excited to join you for this LinkedIn Live event today, and and a great topic. Yeah, normally normally when you're in Connecticut, they can just like put my we can hand reach out. We can like reach out. There we go. Hold on. There, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Now, now you're a bit further away, but um, actually, Peter, let me ask you: what's your what's your take on the whole digital transformation topic? Listen, I think uh, so. I just got back um, from watching last week the Cagney uh, conference down in Florida. For those people who aren't familiar, it's the Consumer Analyst Group of New York. Basically, over the course of four days, they parade in thirty of the largest publicly traded companies to talk about. Think about it as like 30 investor days all compressed into four days. And they basically showcase what they're doing. What I saw consistently across all of the presentations, for the most part, were companies saying we are invested very heavily in digitizing and automating as much of our processes beginning to end as possible. It's the only way we're going to drive efficiencies into this system. So it's a really exciting time. This is an incredibly relevant topic right now. Can't wait to dig in with our guest. Yeah, I mean, and as a, as a matter of fact, we've had two podcasts already this year about the topic, one with Wondelis, one with Sanofi. So sure. people actually want to come and talk about it. People want to hear about it more. So to speak about the topic today, we have no other than Tom Kozlovsky, who is the VP Sales at SoftServe. So soft serve business systems, which is the single digital ecosystem for FMCG sales. How are you, how are you Tom? Thanks for joining. Uh, thank you very much, guys. I'm, I'm really good. And to be honest, before I introduce myself, um, uh, I would like to thank you for the warm introduction. First of all, I would like to express how grateful I am to be here today with you guys. So being invited to FMCG guys is a truly an honor for me. Uh, I've been a listener multiple times myself. I've always admitted the quality of conversations which you guys are having, the depths of insights you are sharing through the platform. So do be part of it. Today is really something I'm excited about. And I look forward to uh, our today's discussion and hoping to contribute something meaningful to our uh, listeners. So yeah, I'm Tom Kozlowski. Uh, coming from an IT background, supporting CPGs in their digital transformation since last, I think, 15 years plus, uh, with really a passion for simplifying uh, complex concepts. So uh, I also represent software business systems, so as, as you mentioned. And to give you a brief idea of what we do, uh, we help FMCG companies meet their digital objectives uh, via or by delivering 
right strategies, services, best practices, expertise, and so-called complete ecosystem of fully integrated AI-driven solutions. So, as um, and, and and like you said um, uh, together, so like title of our talk suggests today, yeah, we are going to look closely at that term digital transformation, which you probably, as you said, heard thousands of times, and each one of us heard it thousands of times. So I will try to do my best today uh, to show you, let's say, what it really means. But to be honest, as uh, as let's say, as we talked before even the session to make it, let's say, a bit exceptional, um, let's say we have agreed that today we are not just going to talk about digital transformation itself, but we are going to try to, uh, let's call it, unpack it. Uh, for our audience. So so I'm here literally today to, to let's say, to bridge that gap uh, between the technology and sales, dive into how digital transformation can help um, FMCG companies. And say it, say it, we're going to kill the myths. We're going to kill them. Uh -huh. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And to, to our audience, the way, dragon. Exactly, slay the dragon. So take out your, your pistols, your swords, virtual, of course, and verbal. And let's go, let's go kill the, those myths. For the audience, by the way, we want this to be an as interact, in, interactive as possible of a session. So if you want to say hi, feel free to comment here. Um, but also, as, as we go on with the session, um, we'll leave a space for Q&A at the end. But do ask your questions as we go, because either I'll save them for the end, or if the question is directly relevant to a topic we're discussing at that moment, we can also introduce the question. So if you want to buy for the beginning, say hi and how good we look today, you can also say that as well. We do look good today, I have to say, Daniel. I mean, speaking on all behalf of all of us. Exactly. I was going to get a haircut, but I delayed it. So I, I'm happy I did. <laughs> um so so let's go let's go right into it um peter if you like we can start the myth busting journey well actually let's let's talk a bit about digital transformation first no yeah i think that's <laughs> probably important I, I think asking uh tom to like just get into uh you know obviously uh, what is digital transformation from your perspective? Like I, I kind of gave my perspective on it, but I want to hear from you. What is digital transformation? And should companies that are looking to engage in this, and this is one of my favorite questions, is it a destination or is it a journey? And what are your thoughts around that? Um, that's a great question. And I think that most probably each one of us will have a completely different experience uh, because it also depends on which of, let's say, industries we had the chance to see, for example, how digital transformation works and, and how it's being used. So there is no simple answer, first of all. So I would say digital transformation is really, let's say, a process of using digital technologies to create or modify existing business processes, culture and customer experience to meet changing business and market requirements. So to give you a simple example here, um, and looking at it from my perspective, where I'm mainly supporting FMCG businesses with the digital transformation, uh, then let's say, imagine a traditional brewery uh, company that let's say relies on conventional methods for production, distribution, customer engagement, and, and so-called feedback collection. So, in traditional scenario, most probably this would mean that the entire production planning is based on manual analysis of data, of historical uh, information captured somewhere on pen and paper, leading to, let's say, overproduction or shortages. Uh, when it comes to distribution, most probably this would mean that it's done through manual route planning without any optimization for deliveries, not efficient fuel consumption, leading to delays in shipment or increase of the costs. When we look at it from customer engagement, then most probably this would be limited to in-store promotions, some paper leaflets, uh, print advertisements, and of course, feedback collection would be mainly based on uh, physical surveys or feedback forms, which is slow and, and inefficient. So here comes that magic digital transformation. So in case of that beverage company, this would mean, first of all, an implementation of a production process supporting system uh, together with trade promotion system with right data and analytics in place to really help you, for example, predict the demand, optimize your production schedules and reduce wastes. 
In case of distribution, this would mean an implementation of suite of solutions to help you automate distribution and logistics, use of GPS to optimize your routes, uh, improve delivery efficiency, reduce fuel consumptions, and ensure on on-time delivery. Um, digital marketing would most probably replace that traditional ways of marketing, which means that this would replace those standard channels of marketing like social media to better understand what our customers as well as end consumers wants and what are their preferences to really tailor that advertising and offering to better understand their needs. And finally, let's say, or maybe not even finally, uh, this would mean, for example, implementation of e-commerce platforms to, to better and more personalize um, offering for these guys and better engagement uh, with customers. So as you can see, it's, it's all about making process more efficient uh, or process or, or service more accessible. Uh, it's continuously adapting to meet the needs of that community it serves. So whenever we talk really about digital transformation, we talk about ongoing journey, so this is not just only one-time activity, of so-called, let's say, improvements and adaptation to ensure on the relevance and value in digital world. That is great. Absolutely agree with you. It is a journey. The market conditions are going to constantly change, and you need to understand that and also understand that the solutions that worked yesterday are not necessarily the ones that work today. And you need to be able to accommodate that and do it as efficiently as possible. So uh, based upon what you said, you gave us some kind of overarching examples. Let's bring it into the, the fast moving consumer goods world. Are there any specifics for this industry that you see as kind of low hanging fruit or even requirements that they, that, that, companies that are in this space should really be focusing on leveraging digital transformation to help them in their businesses? Um, I would say yes and no. Uh, as again, depends on the specifics on the industries, depends on the specific needs of exact market. It also depends on, let's say, how you are looking at the digital transformation, whether your focus is just all about improve specific area of your organization, or let's say you're kind of looking at it much broader and your focus is on the entire organization, looking at it globally, then of course you need to focus on slightly bit different goals, objectives, and you need to think about, uh, let's say, what sort of obligations and what sort of possibilities you have to, let's say, deliver um, uh, those objectives and deliver those uh, those obligations. So it, it really fully depends here. Is it a possibility to do digital transformation? Is it an option or is it really compulsory? Uh, I would say a bit of both, uh, and why? Because if it's a, a possibility, then uh, it offers FMCGs, uh, companies and markets opportunity to really to innovate, to let's say develop uh, completely new services or enhance the existing ones. Uh, it helps you enhance that customer experience uh, via, let's say, wider use of data analytics and digital platforms. Uh, to, again, help you, for example, predict the demand, uh, forecast your baseline, um, let's say recommend your orders uh, or suggest even steps uh, or actions and many more. So, well, this means that, let's say, everybody would like to know uh, what our customers want, right? So, uh, so that's the reason why, let's say, this kind of possibilities brings. But I would say it's also, let's say, an obligation uh, because it becomes almost a necessity due to or competition. So just imagine what would happen if you know that your closest competitor already started that journey. Yeah? So he is already there. He's already thinking about enabling that digital transformation. Meantime, you are just only thinking about it. Yeah. So where he will be once he start doing it, what sort of data and knowledge he will gain thanks to it. So really the market dynamics, looking at it also from the past experience, we had COVID, yeah, a recession, war affecting, for example, here in Europe. Uh, these days, let's say those turmoils and changing market needs, as well as consumers and uh, consumers' behaviors, um, demand uh, is expecting really from these companies to be more agile and flexible. And really with digital transformation, uh, they can achieve that even more than I would say they are ready and prepared to adopt completely new technologies much easier and faster. Mm -hmm. So um, 
it's really important because it gives you a competitive advantage, first of all, and it helps you collect an analyzed vast amount of data. So providing you really, let's say, a deep insights, which can help you support your, or can help you make a smarter decision, simply as that, uh, will help you understand your customers and consumers better, and will help you in the end to boost these sales figures as this is what we want. So it's really important as the FMCG sector is um, highly competitive and, and a rapid market. Yeah, absolutely. I think that we're coming also from a few years of growth. And now the growth is there, but not so much. So I think it's, companies have really seen it themselves in the mirror and it's like, okay, what other areas can we improve? That's not like just generating more sales. Um, but let's go right into it. Let's go into the myths and truths of digital transformation and FMCG. Um, the way that it will work is that Peter and I will be talking out some myths that we've heard out there. And Tom will give us his opinion. And as I mentioned to our audience, feel free to comment, ask questions. Also, maybe tell us about some dragons that you've heard in digital transformation. And let's see if they exist or not. So let's go with number one, which is digital transformation is all about technology. Uh, okay, uh, a good one, I would say. Um, yeah, I, I think it's important to really distinguish here between, let's say, what's true or what's not. And, and many of these myths, let's say, can confuse us uh, and affect our choices. So, so that's very important to think about it. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to help you clear out these uh, and, let's say, reveal some facts behind. Uh, if I, let's say, think about some of the examples, then I'll try to provide you also some of the cases uh, to, to help you maybe make a better decision in the future. Um, so, okay, so that part, is it all about the technology? I would say definitively it's a myth. Uh, why? Um, many companies believe that digital transformation is mainly about integrating new technologies into their businesses. Okay, while technology really plays uh, a significant role here, it's not really quite the whole story. So the truth is, uh, it's about leveraging that technology enables strategic business goals. So it enhances that customer experience and it pushes for innovations. So to give you here two, two great examples, which I can think about, um, a global FMCG company they introduced a digital transformation via, via bringing uh, a digital culture through really employee training and creating innovation hubs for collaboration uh, with technological startups. Um, it helps them to prioritize um, continuous learning within that organization and let's say external collaboration. And this strategic approach really extends beyond just only technology adoption. It focuses more on enhancing that engagement and operational efficiency through that culture of innovation. So what that really means in simple words, this means that these people are much more engaged and they do not resist from changes and do not see the technology as an obstacle. Because you know, quite often digital transformation means for your organization and it brings changes, yeah? So whenever your team is prepared for that, then you know, then they are not going to be so resistant to the technology and they are not going to become, let's say here, uh, one of the biggest obstacles. Um, another example, um, which I could give you would be maybe a bit negative or it's going to show a, a bit negative side, but let's say a company didn't focus much on creating that strong digital change of a culture or they did not have leaders supporting and talking about the technology within the organization so much as they should be. They only concentrated on the digital tools itself, which means that they fully focused just only on technology. After trying for a few years to bring that transformation in place, they faced a lot of pushback. They end up with a solution that wasn't really effective. Uh, people which were confused about why there are these changes. Well, was even really necessary. So right now, they are planning to restart their activity and start over. But this time they want to begin with a clear goal and a plan to put people first instead of technology. So they realized that even the best technology uh, is not going to be successful without the right approach, yeah? without a solid plan, without a team of supporters who can spread that enthusiasm through the organization, because this is quite important. It's not just only really about the technology. So, so I would say my takeaway here would be that it's um, 
changing business uh, to use digital tools shouldn't, let's say, just only be about adding really new technology. It should be really about making a, a big plan that includes the technology and also pays off um, attention to those people and those groups who are involved, that company culture, um, looking at it, how things are done. Uh, as this, let's say, all around strategy is really important for making the change to have that digital success uh, in place. So it helps really the business to stay innovative, uh, work better and stay ahead of the others in that digital world. Uh, and believe me, it really removes a lot of uh, issues, risks and challenges in later stages. Because as we said, digital tra transformation is, is still a journey. This is not just one time action. Yeah. Well, thank you for helping us address the myth that digital transformation is entirely about technology. I think you tackled that straight on. My next question, uh, truth or myth, is digital transformation going to solve all of my sales problems? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would love to say yes, uh, but, but unfortunately, yeah, it's, it's another myth. So, so again, uh, it's a common, I would call it a misconception um, among really businesses uh, diving into digital transformation with the expectations that I will see those immediate results and, and solution boosting up my sales immediately right after first day once it's implemented. So sometimes thinking that if I implement it like these days, which is quite common and, you know, these catchy things like machine learning, artificial intelligence, this will resolve all the pain. You know, artificial intelligence is going to solve it. Again, digital transformation can significantly really enhance your sales processes through, through improved customers' insights, streamlined operations, and more effective engagement strategies. Um, however, it's not really a cure for all sales-related issues. So success here requires that strategic approach that includes really the understanding of uh, customer needs, aligned digital tools, uh, with business goals set in place and continuous adoption to really market changes. So let me again provide you an, an example here. Um, a globally, let's say, recognized FMCG company uh, initiated digital transformation strategy. They, they were not just about focused about increasing sales through, let's say, technology. Instead, they focused on how technology could enhance their overall business operations and customer engagement. So they implemented the digital marketing uh, campaign solution, which was using, let's say, a vast amount of data to really better understand uh, and engage with their customers. So they, they also introduced, let's say, uh, a bit of smart vending machines that provided valuable consumer insights and preferences, leading to, let's say, more personalized marketing and product development. So. Looking at it from the question whether it resolves all the sales problems once implemented, at the very beginning, no. But after some time, yes, it helped. Um, another example could be, let's say, a, an FMCG company which shifted to more so-called D2C model. So this is direct to consumer model. Uh, and they heavily supported the entire initiative behind digital transformation, uh, which was more about mobile applications and e-commerce platforms. A, to really to boost the sales by enhancing customers' engagement and data collection through it. While they saw a significant growth from sales perspective, the journey really, let's say, um, underscored the importance of balancing that digital investment with understanding of customers' behaviors and market trends. So um, as this project was really run globally, they had to slow down at some portion of time with that initiative and adjust it at some uh, at some time for some of the regions. Uh, meantime, they were very successful at the other regions, but in some of the regions, they literally failed. So reason was related simply to that it's not just about really implementing digital tools, but it's also about adapting its products offering and marketing strategies based on the data-driven insights. As you can imagine, that amount of data was really vast and they received a lot of information which they had to just really properly read, stop, adjust, and then play through. Uh, so again, it's quite important, and I would say it's, it's important to mention that digital information here can uh, isn't or, or definitely it isn't a quick fix for sales problems. Yeah, it's a way to do things better in a company 
especially in how it deals with customers. So by using technology smartly, a company can get to know its customers better and can serve them better. And this can lead to a better decisions. And over time, this might help sell more as well. Mm -hmm. And speaking about customers, is digital transformation only applicable in customer relations with modern trade, like the big supermarket chains, the Walmarts, the Tesco's, et cetera? Uh, definitely not. So I think that, uh, again, we have to look at it slightly bit uh, broadly. So I would say, yeah, it's, it's sort of a myth um, in this case. And, you know, looking at it from other channels like traditional trade, uh, digital tools can help you as well. Streamline all the operations can help you enhance your supply chain uh, visibility and can improve your inventory management. Just as an example. Uh, think about the perspective of more, uh, let's say, often visits for those traditional trade markets. Looking at it, for example, let's say you have a field team which needs to go there. Uh, these days, yeah, nobody would like to, let's say, spend that time and money on visiting these uh, guys more often than, let's say, modern trade. But you can use the tools and via these tools, which means not physically, you can have a better control. You can have, let's say, better content which you are sharing with those retailers from traditional trade as it's much more personalized. In the end, again, it's bringing much more sales to you. Uh, looking at it from Horeca uh, perspective, then of course it can help you optimize ordering system. It can improve the entire customer relationship management. It can help you enable, again, personalized marketing and content related to, for example, loyalty programs and many more. Uh, so leading not only to, to better understanding uh, how your Horeca business uh, operates, but also how your end consumers operate and what are their needs. Um, yeah. yeah, and another section would be so-called um, on-trade business, uh, where we are, for example, supporting our customers as well. So let's say pubs or bars can also benefit from digital transformation. And here I have a great case, which is mainly related to computer vision, where image recognition is supporting solutions directly through improved engagement with uh, with end consumers and and customers. So imagine that you can simply assess the situation uh, through the computer vision and then validate, let's say, entire contracts conditions in, in just a couple of seconds. So I would not limit it just only to a modern trade. I think that each of the parts of the company can be supported through it. So let's say the takeaway could be that the, the digital transformation is, just not, is not just um, exclusive domain uh, of modern trade channel, it holds really, let's say, that entire transformative potential for traditional trade, Horeca, on trade business as well. Um, that's the real power of digital transformation because it lies in, in its abilities uh, to adapt and to bring the value uh, to diverse of your business uh, models, providing that strategic uh, advantage, not limited really to, to a specific trade type. And then the great thing is that then you can if you really do digital transformation well, then you can like link the data from the different channels and you can really like do a lot of things. And there's also a lot of a big case of like empowering like your sales reps through technology in very remote locations, image recognition. There's, there's a lot of very cool stuff happening in this space. Exactly. All right, let's tackle another one, Tom, that you can take on and hopefully demystify for us. Um, there's a myth out there that uh, that uh, digital transformation is really only for large corporations that have large IT departments and big budgets. What do you say about that? Uh, yeah, I would say that some people think that only big companies uh, can change their way of working to use more uh, technological approach and digital tools. And I would say that that's a myth, that, that isn't true. So small or medium organizations and small or medium businesses can actually be be even quicker on much more flexible when it comes to enabling the digital transformation. Uh, and here comes why. So, so because first of all, quicker decisions, as I said, so they can make decisions faster. They don't have to go through lots of layers or let's say levels of approvals. Uh, they are much more flexible, uh, which means that they can try different solutions and ways of working without a lot of hassle. And if something doesn't work, then they can quickly change it and they can quickly adopt. Uh, they are sometimes even much more closer to customers. 
So small businesses often know their customers really well, uh, and they can use solutions to understand what their customers want even better and serve them uh, in a much more uh, personalized way. And last but not least, I would say innovation. So they can be creative and come up with new ideas faster and implement those ideas faster. Again, looking at it from what I just said before, let's say quicker decisions, much more and higher and, and bigger flexibility. Um, so in conclusion, the, the idea of digital transformation uh, that it's only just for big companies is, is really not true. Small businesses have a lot of strengths that make them really good uh, at adopting new, new digital ways of working. Um, no matter, so, so I would say really it's, it's not about, so digital transformation uh, is a chance for, for any business, yeah? No matter uh, their size. So small or medium companies have their special strengths that can make going digital even much more beneficial for them, maybe even faster because they, they have that flexibility. Uh, so let's say if you are a small or medium business, evaluate that potential, uh, talk to your vendors more closely, check their offering in details and ask for proofs of, uh, of concept, for example, and look for these uh, guys who can provide, uh, let's say that flexibility um, to you as well. No, that's very interesting. And I think that, I think that there's not enough conversation talked about digital transformation for mid-sized companies and small companies. So I'll write that down for a future episode. And and by the way, if anyone has just tuned into the episode, just a quick reminder that we're myth-busting uh, digital transformation. So we're going over a number of myths that we hear about digital transformation in FMCG. And we're doing that um, with Tom Kozlowski from SoftServe Business Systems and accompanied by a special co-host, as you can see, PBSB from the CPG guys. Surprise, surprise. So to the next one, um, we kind of hinted to it before, but not really, which is that an immediate uh, ROI return on investment is guaranteed. So that means that the moment I press that red button, I'm going to be... <laughs> that my bottom line at least will be better. What about that? Ah, yeah, that, that's a great one. Uh, and I think that most probably if this would be called just only with the vendors, then then they may promise quick returns to sell their solutions uh, uh, immediately. And they will tell you that you will get your ROI just right after you press that button. But unfortunately, the reality is that calculating that ROI for digital transformation effort is really much more complex and depends on various factors. Again, depends on the size, depends on um, area of what you do and what you're trying to implement. So, so yeah, let's talk about it. And uh, let me provide also a couple of, of illustrations or examples here. So first, um, digital transformation, as we said before, is a journey. It's a long-term investment, right? So it doesn't end with, let's say, the implementation happens of initial solution. Yeah, it's, it's just the beginning. So once you finalize your implementation of your first solution or, or set of solutions, it's just the beginning. So when discussing specific solutions and their ROI, it's possible to calculate it straightforwardly. But based on the objectives we have to set and aim to achieve, then it, it also depends on how we want to achieve that. So however, the context of... Um, overall digital transformation uh, is like that the benefits typically emerge gradually. So as the organization adjusts, as the organization grows with the new digital capabilities. Um, second would be, let's say, dependencies on specific uh, objectives and KPIs. Uh, ROI of digital transformation is fully depending on strategic objectives uh, and specific goals set by, uh, by the business. So success should be really measured against these predefined metrics, which could be included behind, for example, customer satisfaction. So let's say here we can apply CSAT or NPS score, looking at it from either satisfaction of a customer or satisfaction of a users from our products, which were deployed. Uh, we can measure operational efficiency. We can measure uh, market share growth. Rather than just purely looking at it as the financial results or financial returns, like I spend X and I see Z out of it. So, so think here about the investment where in results, you will have the access to a real-time data, for example, and analytics, which is going to enable you um, inform decision-making process, which can lead you to a better business outcomes and which can, let's say, include, but is not limited to direct financial returns. 
Uh, and third one, I would call it, let's say it's, uh, uh, I'm calling it um, invisible benefits. So you may benefit out of digital transformation um, from day one, and you may not directly translate into immediate financial results. So this includes, for example, enhanced customer experience, uh, improved brand reputation, or increased agility uh, of your field team, which is also crucial for a long-term competitive and uh, looking at it from competitive perspective, and, and a success. So is it going to translate immediately to, a, to your ROI? I don't think so, but looking at it from a time scale, then this will be clearly visible. So to give you um, a, a few examples here. So again, uh, global FMCG company, um, that was another phase of digital transformation for them and enhancements of the solution via introduction augmented reality uh, to support their process of image recognition to improve the field team speed. So while the immediate ROI might not have been clear here, as it requires not just only soft, uh, software um, uh, investment, but also requires hardware investment, this, um, these initiatives really significantly improved field team engagement and satisfaction of these guys, yeah? Leading to increase of, let's call it loyalty uh, and a long-term sales growth and removal of issues which they had before. Uh, is it simple like I spend X, I get Y? Mm, no, but looking at it holistically or looking at it from a slightly bit different perspective, you see that there are huge benefits behind. Another example could be, let's say, a regional company. A uh, few countries implemented uh, a couple of solutions. So looking at it from digital transformation project, they were focusing on purely demand forecasting by leveraging cloud-based analytics and much more AI. So this initiative allowed them to adjust inventory uh, stocks and levels more accurately, reduce waste and improve product availability. Uh, the immediate financial ROI was not visible due to upfront costs and the learning curve. So as you most probably know, let's say that the neural network models needs to learn. Yeah, So it needs to be fitted with the data. And just only after some time, we see those ROIs that is happening there. So looking at this example, after a year, they improved efficiency, they reduced the stockouts, they improved better customer uh, engagement, which in the end, simple translated to increased sales and market share. So they were able to achieve that ROI, but not within, let's say, right after they are pressing that red button to go live, yeah. but after some time, yeah? It's so like one step takeaway, removed a lot of times. Exactly, exactly. So my takeaway here would be more like, instead of just looking for a quick money, it's important to see those other good things that comes from digital transformation, like happier customers, better work processes, being able to quickly adapt to new solutions and new situations. So this helps the company grow stronger over time. So think about the long-term benefits, not just quick profits, uh, and try to define really your KPIs at every stage of your digital transformation. So look at it from small parts to big parts, to really be able to measure them and see benefits uh, once every single solution, every single part of that process is, uh, is being introduced. All right, let's tackle another one here, Tom. Hey, my company is tech advanced because we have lots of systems that we're using. <laughs> Uh, okay, it's a myth. It, it, definitively, it's a myth. As, as it mix up really, uh, uh, I would say, uh, a truly being ahead in technology with just having a lot of, uh, of digital tools. So true technological advancement is not really about the number of, of systems, uh, but how you utilize this system. So how effective these systems are either integrated, yeah, I'm not even talking about not integrated because then that effectiveness, I'm not sure if it could be measured. Uh, but once those systems are integrated, then you're looking at it from perspective of what quality it delivers. Are they increasing, for example, any efficiency within your organization? So um, yeah, here I have quite, uh, even a recent experience uh, with one company uh, which implemented, and, and guys, that's the reality. So they implemented literally six different solutions to do the exactly same thing. And each of these solutions was doing the same stuff, uh, but was used just only a, a, a small portion of it. So they used first solution to just calculate routes, second solution just to use for some different purposes and so on and so forth. Of course, each of these solutions were not integrated at all, means the company introduced many solutions. They were advanced with digital tools, but they created data silos. 
So, and they realize just only once they start thinking about, okay, so now we have all these tools in place, let's start thinking about more MLAI. And then they realize that, oh my God, we live in those data silos. We are not able to even get the data from the right place and we don't know how to do it. So right now we are in the process of helping them removing these silos, removing some of literally these systems and integrating the others. Um, how, one question, how do the, why do yeah. these silos appear in the first place? Like why, uh, what's the origin of these duplicities of, of, of that, systems? That's a, that's a great question. And I think that there is a simple reason. Uh, they too much focus on uh, digitalization. They too much focus on enabling that digital, uh, 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 let's say technologies, instead of really thinking about the process itself. So they allowed really the vendors or different set of vendors to sell what they have and talk just only about the portion of the stuff which they have instead of thinking holistic and instead of thinking strategically about the entire business and entire processes. So in the end, they end up with uh, literally six different tools. They didn't know, okay, how right now we can get out of this situation to really start thinking about next steps. So it's also quite important here um, to, to look at it, let's say, from um, always try to, to align that every technology investment with, let's say, specific business objectives, right? Because whether it's improving your customer experience, whether it's enhancing um, uh, any of parts of your business or it's driving innovations or it focus on the data, ensure that there is a really a clear goal behind each of these tools or systems you implement. If you are not going to do it, then you might end up with a situation that you will get to the corner and you won't be able to even move any forward. You will have to step back to really change the situation, literally remove some portion of that or really restart the entire process. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you, you mentioned data. And I've heard many times that to do digital transformation, data is like the basis of it all. Truth or myth? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, uh, again, we are here somewhere in the middle. So the idea that the data is foundation of the digital change, I would say has some truth, uh, but it's a bit more complicated. So of course, data indeed plays a critical role in digital transformation. It serves as a foundation uh, for informed decision-making company uh, to provide these customer insights. So to really tell to these guys what to do and how to do it better. And using data, well, it doesn't depend on, on having, let's say, a better digital tool. So it also depends on how well an organization uh, can organize, manage, and understand the data uh, uh, which they have and in, inside of their uh, activities. I've seen many times organizations having data or thinking that they have data and they are ready for more advanced operations. In most of the cases, once we get into details, we either realize that the data is in inappropriate quality, there's lack of it, or it's not usable because it's missing key elements. So it's always important to focus on two aspects here, I would say, when it comes to data. Um, understand its role in digital transformation. So what we want to achieve uh, with it from strategic point of view. This means it's not only important to collect the data, but also to ensure that it's accurate, it's accessible uh, and analyzed in ways that align with business goals. Uh, and the second part is something what uh, we call a data-driven culture. So this simply means that employees at all levels should be really encouraged and trained to use data in their decision-making process. Why? Uh, because it helps a company makes a smarter decision based on the facts and numbers, not just uh, based on guesses. So this way, everyone looking at it from sea level to, let's say, field team, use real information to figure out what's going on, what customers want, how to make things better, and how to solve real problems. It's like having a roadmap that shows you the best path uh, that takes you uh, so you don't get simply lost. So for the audience, I would say here, um, it's quite important to uh, for changing and improving the businesses, looking at it from data. So data is really important here. However, the most important step for a company is to really build that culture that values that data-driven decision-making. So this means that training employees on importance of data, setting up processes for using data effectively, and having leaders who supports and demonstrates the value of making decisions 
based on data is quite crucial. So this way, data becomes a valuable tool to help really improve how things are done uh, and make your sales greater. Uh, so using data is really a smart way to uh, to bring big changes, even with basic tools and, and even with basic technologies. Yeah, so here we had a, a myth, which is actually partly true. You know, that data yeah. is very important, but it's not only the quantity, but it's actually the quality, which is very important. And by the way, we're about to hit the last myth we prepared for today. So do start, if you have questions, comments or whatnot, do, do, get, them, do get them out. Don't be shy. All right. So I get the uh, pleasure of uh, addressing the last one for you to tackle, Tom. Uh, I have ChatGPT as an app on my iPad. I use it very frequently. Uh, but uh, ChatGPT, bar generative AI more generically, but is it going to help us uh, as users solve our most serious problems? Is that true or is that a myth? uh great question again uh and you know i would say whenever we are talking about generative ais or chat gpts or bards and so on i would say this topic is really hot these days right so everybody talks about it everybody thinks about it and and the idea that it's going to solve big problems so let's say it's going to resolve all my problems i would say require a, a, a careful understanding um, and at least today i would say it's a myth uh most probably it's going to change soon uh, as this technology evolves pretty quickly. Uh, but I would say chat GPT or let's say GPTs and similar AI systems are quite advanced and can be very helpful and useful in many areas. Um, they are of course not to fix uh, for everything. Yeah, So they are not going to magically resolve all the problems, but as they still have issues uh, with, for example, understanding humans or understanding more complex elements like humans would do. They have certain problems with um, accuracy, especially when such uh, AI models are based on outdated information or not good quality data. Uh, and of course, it's not, uh, let's say, Skynet yet. So yeah, it's not going to, uh, to, to let's say, take over the world. It does not have any self-awareness. It does not have any common sense nor ethical judgment. Uh, which means it just only simply follows uh, a, a program's uh, guidelines. Uh, it just gets the data from, let's say, big data sets, and it helps us to understand that data through. We don't have to do it, just do that simple job. So, so far, I see only areas, and, and based on the discussions which we are having also with, uh, with tons of companies who are looking more into GPTs these days, I would say that GPTs are used much more by FMCGs to support directly employees when it comes to internal company activities or to support them to answer questions when it comes to internal big data sets. Example, uh, highlight me a trend based on the data uh, and tell me, let's say, which way I should go. So how it looked a year ago and how it might look these days. So when it comes to these operations, then I need to admit that GPT models are really helpful, which means they are helpful for making, let's say, things run smoother faster, getting things done, uh, not always with 100% uh, correctness. So this means these tools shouldn't be seen as, a, uh, let's say, the only answer to every problem. But the main power of GPTs is that it helps and adds to what people know, giving them really a place to start for getting new ideas or help them complete their work. So when it comes to strategic decisions or choices, creating new products, solving tricky problems. Here, the only people can bring to, and, and really can resolve it. But using GPTs uh, as an extra help, uh, not as a total replacement, is really a, a wise choice. So I would say FMCG businesses should use both here, newest technologies and the value of human understanding and the value of human brain. What is uh, stupid, very stupid question? What does GPT stand for? Uh, uh, yeah, that was generative. Uh, oh boy, that that's a great question. And to be honest, I <laughs> forgot it. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Sorry for that. No, 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 no. no. Um, but generative pre-trained transformer. There you go. Who would have? Yeah, exactly, have exactly. Thanks for that. No, yeah, no, no, and, no. and you know that that's a great point, and maybe we should think about the next session because you know there are also huge differences between, let's say, 
AI and AI uh, versus GPTs and neural models or machine learning and AI, which are used for a slightly bit different purposes. So this topic is quite broad. Yeah. And, uh, and my, you know, my, there are my, fa my favorite example is just like all of these, uh, particularly in the FMCG world, their products have accumulated tens of thousands of user generated content submissions in the forms of ratings and reviews. Do you really want to read 10,000 of them? Or can you use mm. a natural language process model to synthesize, find the most common uh, topics and assess their sentiment? And you can actually activate on that. You, you can't activate on someone trying to actually read 10,000 reviews. You just, you, your yeah. brain will go buggy. So that's a good example. Um, but you still need to remember that you need to train it. It takes yes. time. Yep. Uh, yeah, so so that's also a quite important part and quite important factor Absolutely. here. Absolutely. All right. Um, so why don't we, uh, one thing we want to leave is, as this has been great, by the way, going through all these and really trying to bust the myths. One thing we'd love to leave our audience with is um, a framework, probably, Tom, on digital transformation strategy. What should our audience be thinking about when it comes to building that framework will, that will lead to successful mm -hmm. digital transformation? Um, okay. Um, I would say, okay, so, so let's say con concluding this discussion uh, around digital transformation, I think it should, uh, or maybe I should try to revert this slightly bit to more What's in it for me? I mean, what's in it for those companies thinking about enabling digital transformation or if they are already there? So I, I think that it's clearly visible that digital transformation gives companies the opportunity to really enhance um, operationally. It improves the engagement, whatever we are talking, let's say internal engagement or engagement with their customers or retailers, and allows you to stay really competitive in, in, in rapidly evolving markets. So it allows those businesses to leverage the data for better decision. Uh, it helps them to make personalized content and offering, innovates them uh, to be ready for, let's say, that future innovations, so looking at even from perspective of more AI, more GPTs, more decision-making or predictive uh, world. So how companies can enable it. Uh, I would say there are a couple of different elements and different factors starting from um, start with a clear vision, uh, assess your current state, try to answer what really digital transformation means to you, to your business. Um, think about the data analytics piece, think about better decision making and try to identify the gaps within your organization. What was not covered, what was already covered. That was the, would be the first step. Second would be define clear objectives. This is really quite important. So align efforts within your organization with business goals, where it's market expansion or it's a completely new solution implementation. Always try to define the objectives and think about what you really would like to achieve through implementing of that single solution or suite of solutions. Another element would be focus on culture and people. So train your employees encourage them and promote of that culture of innovation and data decision driven place it's super important because then if you implement solutions but let's say you're not going to have people which will follow you then you will fail with all these implementations because you will have those huge obstacles looking at it from those who will be pushing back to go back to the old ways of working so look for the right vendor and don't look just only for the fancy solutions yeah but also expertise and holistic view. So look for vendors who really can provide the entire short and long-term plan strategies, who are going to help you and will support you as a real partners to focus on implementing solutions, not only will look how, let's say, deeply into their pockets, how they can just sell you the solution, but they are not going to even think much about the processes. They need to help you to define the right and measurable KPIs. They should be flexible, same as you should be um understand the journey yeah as digital transformation is really a continuous process with not defined start or an end it's an evolutionary path that requires really ongoing assessment it requires adoption and that's normal uh i think this leads also to the fact that you should be able to navigate that complexity yeah digital transformation is a journey sometimes it's really a complex process so, for example, when it comes to integrating with new technologies into existing landscape, you might have a plenty of legacy systems, which maybe you cannot get rid of, you cannot replace them. They still need to be there. 
So these tasks should not be only viewed and dealt via IT, but should involve also other departments uh, as well. And this is quite crucial uh, because sometimes companies are, are, are skipping that part fully. They are just focusing, okay, so digital transformation will be just fully done by IT. Yeah, and, and that's it. That's wrong approach. Uh, and I would say, last but not least, start with small, start small. So start with proof of concept, start from MVP, so minimum valuable product. So think about how, uh, look for quick wins, yeah? Build momentum for a large initiatives. Um, so to, to do this well, uh, companies should really start with clear plans, create support, create a supportive work environment. They should make sure that there are different departments involved and they work together, even though it can be complicated. It's not just really for the IT team to handle. Uh, it's a big strategy that needs a strong leadership. So that's for sure. And the ability to, to keep changing as, as needed. Uh, getting into digital is not just really about following the, the, the latest trends. It's not about staying ahead in a constantly changing market and is less of an option and I would say more of a, a necessity and, and to, to enable it. So not engaging um, into digital transformation uh, might create a risk leaving your FMCG company behind. And I guess that nobody wants to be there and nobody wants to stay behind. Yeah, it's a, it's a means to an end and not an end in itself, yeah. right? So we have some questions that come in. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks, uh, Derek. And Charles, thanks us for uh, our time. We still have like four minutes. So very quickly, Tom, let's uh, answer the question. So Kurt says, how do you deal with the different, ah, here we go. How do you deal with the different speed of uh, digital transformation adoption in a company in a structured and efficient way, assuming tools and systems might enter through certain departments and get adopted while other departments might be left behind? Uh, I don't know if the, the, what you said about the conclusions kind of answers that, no? Uh, I, I think yes, but but we can touch this point as well. I, I think that this is a very important point, and thanks, Kurt, for raising this. Um, uh, I think that it's super important to uh, to let's say think about not leaving anyone behind, and this is what we touched. So we touched the, the point related to culture and the people. It's super important to not to just speed up there, but you know, at certain portion of of time, or really at the very beginning, whenever you are planning your process, you are thinking about your objectives, you are thinking about the the way of how the solution will be adopted within the company. You should include these guys from different departments. You should include these guys from even different regions and countries uh, to share their pains, to share their opinion and listen to them. Be because you know, if they are not going to be um, uh, introduced or they are not going to be involved into the process at the very early stage, you will face these obstacles and you might face uh, tons of issues. And I I've seen this multiple times where the companies were starting um, uh, their digital transformation and then they were ending up uh, with solutions which were implemented. These solutions were really great, uh, but the biggest obstacles here were different departments which just simply, they didn't want to switch. They didn't want to use these new tools because they simply, they did not understand the benefits behind. They did not understand what sort of improvement it's going to bring them. So this is quite important uh, to do so. Once you do it, then I think it will be pretty straightforward. And you can ask your vendor to help you here to build the entire plan of the adoption and how to do it in the right way. Quick, another question from Derek, which is really good, but we need to answer it in literally one minute. Why do so many companies aspire to be data-driven, but hesitate to invest in, adequate, in an adequate data infrastructure? Uh, uh, wow, uh, a great question. Um, uh, I think that they want to be data driven because they think that they uh, have a lot of data which could be used for that purpose. But in the end, once they are trying to really understand the quality of the data, they are not able to do so. So uh, I think that's and the then, main reason. And then they postpone it forever, probably. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Then they are restarting the process internally. They are checking within the organization, different departments to understand what they have. And they are ending up with, uh, yeah no knowledge or understanding that literally they have nothing and they need to start that process from scratch or they are afraid of starting this process because it's going to involve so many people and so many areas that it's not going to be so easy yeah definitely so if you want to learn more about what the software business systems do or about tom feel free to connect with them on linkedin directly tom get ready for a full inbox <laughs> hope you can deal with it um but it, this was great thanks so much and remember that you can 
Um, later, probably in a week, 10 days time, this will be available in a podcast format, audio, also video on YouTube. Um, Peter, thanks so much for joining me as a co-host. Any, any final remark? Yeah, absolutely. This was a phenomenal experience for us to be able to learn from a master around how companies can implement digital transformation, what's real, what's kind of uh, unrealistic, uh, and to build a framework. I absolutely love that. Leaving them with a framework on exactly how to, how to address this is remarkable. So grateful that Tom was able to join us today for this uh, very important and timely conversation. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thanks for, so much to everyone for joining and we'll see you in the next live or the next FMCG guys episode. Have a great rest of your day. Cheers. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye.